Hi everyone, C1 Tana back. First, a general warning. YouTube has now begun to license music from the YouTube library as well. From my next video, I will make my own intro and outro music for my own channel. I recommend other channels actually to do the same as well before YouTube decide to claim money for the music as well. Be aware of the situation. I don't like it at all, but I want to give a general warning before the shit hits the fan. That's how it is. And now over to today's video. Hi everyone, C110 are back and today I'm gonna do a review of an unboxing. We can call this a new old stock product, that's for sure, without any doubt. Because this is Microsoft Sidewinder. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Sidewinder Gamepad. USB it says at the front there and you can clearly see at the top it says Microsoft there and you can see a brand of a USB. I'm gonna take it a little bit closer so you can see this. Let's see, uh, this is a little bit a big box so I have to lift up the camera a little bit here so you can see this. Yep, here it says Microsoft. Yes, and as you can see I paid 50 for this back in 4th of July 2016. And there is a reason for that, because this is a product I had in my shelf that I forgot about. And you can see there are some smaller pictures here, glare I cannot do anything about. That is a trigger button at the back is my guess, shoulder button or something, D-pad and 6 controller pad. And I paid 50 for this, That you have to divide that into 8 parts to get US dollars, 8 or 9 parts. And as you can see, 4th of July. 2016. Yep, before I go any further, I need to explain here a little bit. Because, yes, the product, I forgot about this. I bought this in 2016 actually. The product was released in 2002, so it's pretty old. This is a 20 year old product. Yep. And I can, I'm gonna show you the specification it needs to run and all of that. I wonder if I can use this on a, a Windows 10 PC. That would be fun to check out. Technically, you should be able to do that because it's only a controller that needs a USB port. So technically, it should recognize it right away. But when it comes to Microsoft, guys, you can be wrong there because at one point I tried to use an older Microsoft Office on my newer PC and get the message on the screen that it was too old, you have to buy a new one. Uh, yeah. When you have a Office program that was released for the 32-bit system, you should be able to use it on a 64-bit system. It's like taking a game that are 8-bit and, and, and you get the message on the screen that you cannot use it in a 16-bit uh, con um, console. Because technically you can. In Japan, I don't have the card by the now, but in Japan you have also got released game for the Super Nintendo. A collection of games that contains 20 NES games on the Super NES system. Which means that they were translated for exactly the purpose, to use 8-bit games on a 16-bit console. It would be worse to try the verse, vice versa, to put a 16-bit game into an 8-bit Console, that would be worse, because then you need some adapters to make that work, actually, and all of that. Uh, back in the day, I think Nintendo, actually, there was a company that tried that ID to Nintendo, but I could be wrong here, but my memory may, might be a little bit fussy about it. But there was a company that wanted to make an adapter that you could run 16-bit games on the 8-bit console system, but the Nintendo say no. Because they want to make their own 16-bit uh, console instead, so they can make more money. Of course, that's how it is. And I'm gonna. This is totally sealed, guys, and has been sealed for 20 years. And I'm gonna show you a little bit more here. There are some information at the top here. They they, they love the price stickers from the thrift store. That's for sure. But that's how it is. And here it says SW Gamepad Windows 32. Hmm. Made in Malaysia. Yeah doesn't matter so much if it is a 32x controller it should be capable to run on the 64 system shouldn't it 
and we got some information at the back here we can start here first you can see the pictures here and it says something here we can start with the English it's easier action buttons eight programmable buttons yep that's the buttons there and you can see that it has six buttons layout like the uh, Mega Drive controller which is nice for those who love the six uh, button um, controller and you got a d-pad, 8-way digital d-pad, okay, 4, 6, okay, 8, alright, you can press, for example, down left, down right, or up right, and uh, up left, or something like that, that's what I mean about 8, is my guess. And you got uh, shoulder buttons, quick triggers, it says, two precise quick trigger buttons, uh, exactly where you want them, okay simply enough and it says USB connection I guess this is USB 1 but you should be able to put it in a USB 2 anyway and this is a controller so it doesn't demand so much anyway so it should be fine to use it on a USB 2 input so uh, and even maybe USB 3 as well but here comes some other information I don't know if this internet side is up still don't forget that this is a 20 year old controller Microsoft.com slash sidewinder it says and here is something to show you it's copyright 2002 all rights reserved yeah, yeah 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 this is a 20 year old product so who cares so yeah and there is some weird layout here on the controller this looks like um, I can show you the front again here if I do it like that you can see the controller in this hole. Uh, this looks like a controller that uh, they made after the design of the Dreamcast, actually. Because I have a third-party controller to Dreamcast that looks pretty much like this. Take a look at my review of uh, Dreamcast for that. That's a pretty old video. I should maybe make a re-release of it so we get higher quality on the video of it. That's something I'm thinking about, guys, so that will be in a later future, but that's how the controller looks like. Yep. And here comes some more funny information that I'm going to show you, and I have to tilt the box on the other side here. First, this. It says it's designed for Windows XP 2000 and the dreaded Millennium and 98. Yeah. And here is some other information that brings back a lot of memories to me. System requirements. Let's see. Let's find the English one here. I have the D sticker, a sticker that I put over it, a price tag, of course. So sorry for that. It says system requirements to use Microsoft Sidewinder Gamepad USB. You need, and this is a hilarious actually to think about. Multimedia personal computer with Pentium 166 megahertz or higher compatible processor with an a USB port. Okay, it supports Windows 98 SE 2000 professional, Windows XP Home, or Windows XP professional. It says gamepad is compatible with Windows 98 SE. Or later based games only okay and this is a little bit funny access and to use the internet for play may require payment of a separate fee to an internet service provider and local what does it say a telephone uh, call toll a long local long distance telephone call charge may apply that's because back in 2002 as this was released, yep, ESDN was very normal, which means that you had a telephone line and you get the internet through there. That dates this to be very old. It really does. And back in 2002, what kind of PC did I have? Uh, let's see if I remember some of the specs here. Um, I remember that I upgraded a hard drive on the PC. So I got the best hard disk that you could get with most storage space as possible for the consumer market in 2002. I had a 7 gigabyte hard drive, I kid you not. 
and that was the largest part of my PC, I remember that. I had an 886 PC, 32 megabyte of RAM, 7 gigabyte of hard drive, and I had a Voodoo Banshee card in it. I can't remember which one in the series because this is very old. And I even got on my PC a tape deck built into it. Yeah, a magnet tape deck that you could store um, use as um, what can I say? Use as a um, backup for your PC. So this squared magnet uh, tape. It's, it's it's not a regular tape, but a little bit different, a little bit thicker, and a little bit smaller than the regular tape. And I think you could store two gigabyte on one cassette. I think it was one or two gigabyte, and that puts things in perspective. When I bought a hard disk that had 7 gigabyte back in 2002. For me, it cost a heck of a lot of money. I paid over 2000 for that hard drive in 2002, which was freaking expensive when you think about what you get today. But there you have it. And I remember playing games in 2002 like Flight Simulator. I played Common and Conquer Red Alert. Yes, Common and Conquer could be run, the first game in the series. You could choose if you want to use Windows. In my case, I used Windows 98. And you can also use uh, the game on DOS, actually. It has had both the settings when you installed it. And uh, the game checked which install would be fine for me. And uh, the PC ran uh, Command & Conquer Red Alert through Windows 98 SE, because that was what I had back in the day. So that's a pretty amazing to think about and now let's open this bad boy up as you can see at the top here there is the sticker and if I turn it upside down the sticker continues here it's not been opened before and just to prove that point I'm gonna put it at the bottom as well you can see the sticker is here still sealed not been opened at all so now I'm gonna take the scissor and see what we get inside this side window so this is the first time in 20 years that I'm going to open this. Yep, the scissor is ready here. Let's cut it open. I have to put the camera down when I do that. Oh, that was not easy to get open, that tape here. I need to try it again so I don't break the box because the box is a museum piece in itself. Now I can put the scissor away. Yep, because I have opened it. The seal has been broken. Yep. What do we have inside? B2 it says, okay. Is it basement 2? I don't know. I can see an instruction blanket in here as well, or manual. Let's open up and see what we got. I'm gonna put the box away for a moment. Nothing less in the box, or nothing more. And we got ourselves the controller itself, and we got a manual. Side window, it says. All right, let's see if there is any pictures or anything in it. Uh, user's guide, connecting the gamepad, testing the gamepad. And it says also here, for Windows 98 and 2000, you, this is how you do it. For Windows XP, you do that. So just pause to read for yourself, guys. Information and document, it says here. Nothing more to say or see. Let's see if I find some pictures, I don't know. My gamepad is connected by the disk. Okay, that's troubleshooting. If it doesn't recognize your signed window and all of that. You know what, there are no uh, pictures on this. There are only one small picture in it. Let's see if I can bring it up at least. And it's the USB connector here. Yeah, I know I got the French text here now, that's okay. So, what is, what's, uh, you can see the USB, USB, the uh, the controller in its hole here. And it's just say Microsoft at the top here, and just some glossy pictures. So, th there's nothing more to say about the instruction manual. It is what you expect, actually. Pages of text, and that's it. Let's put it away and open the box. Uh, that's where the manual was at the back, is my guess. 
Uh, where do we open this? Right here. Let's see. Hold on. Ooh, I might break this box actually. There we have it. And we open it up. And here is the controller itself. In a non-static plastic. Yeah, let's put that away. At the floor with it. And I'm gonna take this out of the plastic here. Ooh. How does it smell? It smells plastic and it smells new. That's the light. That's how you hold it. It feels very comfortable actually. And it's not so springy uh, D-pad. That's good actually. And it's actually comfortable to use in all positions because of this angled here. And you can see how they did it. So you see you have eight ways to push the button. One, two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, you have a start button is my guess. And another button. I, my guess is start and select is my guess. A, B, C, X, Y, Z. Yeah. And let's see. Two trigger buttons at the bottom here. <laughs> and here is the product information. Part and all of that. And it says something here. Can you see this? I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, it's a little bit hard to see this. If I tilt it like that, maybe you can. Yep. So, that's actually very good trigger buttons. And it fits very well in my hand here. You have to stretch yourself a little bit to get the upper button. I can feel that, but this is, this is good enough. Yep. So, there is the wire. And there is the USB connector. Yep, and I see I have low battery on my camera, but that doesn't matter. We are done already, so there's nothing more to say anything about this controller. So this is a short review of the Sidewinder controller, guys. 20 years it has been in the package without opening before today. That's nice. And I'm gonna seriously try this in Windows 10 and see what's happening. I have PC that can run this, no matter what. I even got a 32-bit PC up and running, even today. That even you can access internet with and everything. So that's how it is. Thank you for watching this short review. Have a nice evening, everyone. Take care. Bye bye. Thanks for watching my channel. See you on 10. Bye. Take care.